And we are back with some more Seattle Kraken franchise mode. And I've decided that I'm going to wait to do anything drastic until Austin Matthews comes back, at least. He is a very big part of our team. And he's a big reason of why we're not simulating all that well right now. I mean, we still have a winning record, but it's still not ideal. What I'm going to do for right now is send a couple of players down. And actually, one of the players who I'm going to send down is actually technically already in the AHL, Jimmy Larson. But he's not getting any playing time. Like, he's not playing at all. So we're going to just send him back to his junior team, I'm assuming. So hopefully he gets some more playing time there. The next guy who I want to send down is Simon Forsmark. Really has not been great this year. Only a 50 defensive grade compared to last year. I believe he had somewhere in the 60s last year. Otherwise, I probably wouldn't have kept him on the team. And But this year, he is just not up to snuff. So we're going to send him down to Palm Springs. And coming back up will be Madison Bowie. And at forward, we're going to be sending down Zooey. He hasn't... I, I don't like the way he simulates. I hate to say it, but I really do not like the way he has been simulating so far. True, he's only played 10 games, but in the games that he has played, he hasn't been good. And if he's not going to play every game, then I may as well just send him to the AHL. And hopefully he could get better there. I know he's a two and a half star player already, but... You know what, if he's not playing, then once again, there's just no point in keeping him up, in keeping him up here. So, who we're going to be calling up in his place is a guy we've had for a long time now, but he hasn't actually ever gotten the chance in the NHL, Josh Nodler. We got him in a trade with Calgary a while back, I believe for Jay Beagle. Yeah, all the way back in 2022. It is now 2026, heading into 2027. And rating-wise, he's actually not that bad. So, you know what, he's paid his dues for sure. So we may as well call him up and see what he is about at the NHL level. So those are all the moves that I wanted to make for right now. We'll see how we do. And especially once we get Austin Matthews back, then that's when we can really make a move if we have to. But I don't want to do anything too reactionary, you know, because we did have a winning month this past month. And a lot of our players are actually simulating pretty well. It's just a couple of players, those couple of players that were not really simulating the way they should or the way that I want them to. And then there's also a couple of players who are not producing offensively at all, who I expect to, you know, Yamamoto, Onishko as well. Onishko has some pretty good ratings. I'm not sure why he is struggling of all people. He must just not be getting too much time. Yeah, only 1126. I mean, that's understandable. Yeah, Yamamoto is only getting... 9.45, so I don't, I don't know what happened from the start of this year and the end of the last year, because last year, with us, he had 22 points in 33 games, and now all of a sudden he has 3 in 26, so I'm not sure what that's about. But I guess it's made up for with guys like Fantilli, Suzuki, Hughes, Dubé, Amirov all stepping up. So we do have guys who are producing, it's just that I, I would like to see some of these other guys... Producing a little bit more as well. So I think now we're going to simulate a month and see how everybody does. And let's just hope for some improvement here. Wow, so it appears that Connor McDavid actually just signed with someone. The Washington Capitals have signed him. And it is currently December 8th. So it's sort of the same as a Matthews situation, it looks like. Because he took a while to sign. Only a two-year deal as well for... Nearly 12 mil. Wow, Adam Fantilli with a six-point night versus the Dallas Stars the other day. He has certainly turned into one of our better players. Oh, yeah. He, he has already surpassed his point totals from last year. He has 47 points in 40 games played. Last year, he had 46 and 79. He is, I would not be surprised if his potential jumps up to, like, five-star and his talent go, jumps up as well. Because that's incredible. So we're on January 1st now, and good news, Odinger is back on track. He's got a 907 save percentage now. Before it was at 897, I believe. So as we take a look at his recent games, you have to believe that his save percentage is somewhere around 920, 930 maybe, recently. I mean, not this game here against San Jose. That was kind of ugly, but... For the most part, he looks like he's been better as of late. Lindbergh with a 924 as well in 10 games, so goaltending, we're looking good. On defense, you have Hughes, Branstrom, and Pellick. They're all doing very well. Bowie has a 60 in offensive and defensive grades, so better than what Forsmark was doing for sure. And then Kirsnov, Nemich, Mirages leave a little to be desired, but it's okay, I suppose. Nemich has 17 points, so... It makes up a little bit for his lack of grades. Let's see their stats. Luke Hughes with 34 points in 39 games. Looking like a breakout season for him, possibly. 
as long as he doesn't slow down. Then you have Brandstrom with 28, Nemich with 17, as we just saw. Nine for Kirsanov and Pelik, five for Bowie, and four for Mirages. And forward, you have Fantilli with 47 points. He has certainly taken over in the absence of Austin Matthews. 32 for Amirov, 31 for Dubé, 28 for Suzuki, 19 for Van Sickle, 18 for Ronnie, 18 for Wright. Yeah, kind of underwhelmed by Wright lately, unfortunately. 17 for Kempe, 16 for Arvidsson. And 8 for Nurmi, 6 for Sirenek and Yamamoto, and 4 points for Onishko, 2 for Nodler in 3 games. Grade-wise for forwards, it's about what you would expect. Fantilli with a 71 grade overall, 70 offensive grade, that should be much higher in my opinion, but he seems to be doing well for himself, so I guess I'm not complaining. So overall, it could be better, but we are definitely on the right track as of late. And it looks like Matthews will also be back soon, two to three weeks left on his injury. So maybe closer to February 1st, he'll be good to go, hopefully. (laughs) As long as he doesn't have a setback, that would be very unfortunate. Now let's see where we are on the standings. We are currently sitting in second in the Pacific Division, which, I mean... Our division is just absolutely terrible this year. So if we don't if we don't make the playoffs this year, then there's no hope for the rest of the GM mode, really. And look at that as well. Adam Fantilli's tied for third in league scoring. And Austin Matthews is finally back and ready to get back to our active roster. Unfortunately, Fantilli went down for a little bit with some dizziness and nausea, but he should be back soon. But welcome back to the lineup for the first time this year, Austin Matthews. So hopefully we can continue our good simulation as recently... We are 29, 15, and 6. Definitely a very, very good improvement upon where we've been earlier this year. And we are currently first in our division, well above the majority of the other teams in the division, besides maybe Anaheim, who could possibly catch us. But even them, we have three games on them. So I'm glad I didn't make any major changes, because we didn't even have, you know, it wasn't that bad of a run. It was just, it wasn't as good as I wanted it to be. But now that we have Matthews back in the lineup... We're looking much better. I mean, obviously, we, sh- we just lost our uh, top point scorer in Fantilli for a little bit, but that's fine. Once again, he'll be back soon. And once we have a full and healthy roster, this team should be good to go for the playoffs. And Fantilli is now also back in the roster. So we now, for the first time this season, have a fully healthy roster. And we actually have to send somebody down here. I believe that's going to be Nodler. Well, I mean, actually... Yamamoto only has seven points in 53 games this year. I might honestly want to trade him. I mean, I'm not sure honestly what we're going to get back for him. Probably peanuts, but you know, <laughs> you know what? He's taken up a spot on the roster and he's eaten up salary cap as well. I really thought he would have been better. And he was at first, you know, 22 points in 33 games. But now this year, I don't know what the heck happened. <laughs> I guess it's just that we have too many offensively minded forwards on our roster and. With him being relegated to the fourth line, he just doesn't simulate all that well. I guess that's what's happening here because I don't have any other explanation. Yeah, he's on the fourth line center. That definitely makes sense. We we need some more defensive-minded players for sure, so we're going to shop him here. I'm liking the way Philip Hollander is looking defensively here. 16 defensive read, 15 positioning, 16 team player, and he is Toronto's offer. Chicago, Martin Haas not looking for a defenseman. Vancouver... Frederick Allard, once again, not looking for a defenseman. And Daniil Suvinov. Let's see him. He's with Rapid City Rush. Uh, I don't like him as much as Philip Hollander, for sure. I mean, whoever we acquire here is going to need to be sent to the AHL anyway. So if he has to pass through waivers, then so be it. Yamamoto has been literally useless this year. And it's not like he's a good defensive player either. And as we look at his defensive grade, yeah, only 52. Yeah, let's go for it. Yamamoto for Hollander, complete trade. So now, of course, we're going to have to send somebody down. I'm thinking that's Hollander. It's either Hollander or Nodler. They're both going to have to pass through waivers. So let's compare the two here. I don't know. They're, I would say they're even offensively. Defensively, Nodler is a bit more well-rounded, but the defensive read is in Hollander's favor. Physical, they're... I, I I can't really... I mean, they're basically the same. Mental ratings, once again, I can't really give it to one guy or the other. They're almost exactly the same player. But just because of the defensive read, I think we'll keep Hollander on the roster and we'll send down Nodler. Sorry about that, buddy. <laughs> he, he finally gets his one chance to go up to the NHL. He just gets sent back on waivers because we traded for some guy who happens to be a good defensive player. So we're at the trade deadline now, and we're 33-22-6. 
We're still in the top two in our division, but as long as we stay the course, we should be fine. I mean, Fantilli still leads our team with 64 points. You have 52 for Amirov, 47 for Dubé, 43 for Brandstrom, 41 for Hughes, 35 for Suzuki. So I wish there would be a bit more depth scoring going on. Matthews has had a bit of a slow start compared to what we expect out of him. He only has eight points in 11 games. I mean, that's still good, but, you know, not Matthews good. Goaltending-wise, Odinger, he has been pretty solid. 9-10 save percentage. And Lindbergh with a 9-24, so no complaints there. Defensively, we have a couple of good point scorers in Brastrom and Hughes. And grade-wise, no one that really stands out too badly besides maybe Mirages. He's only played 28 games anyway, so it's not like he's dressing every night. I, I think Bowie's dressed almost every game since he's come up. So I was about to say that I might want to trade Cyrnik just because I don't really see a place on the roster for him anymore. He's an offensive forward, and... He only has 15 points this year, 55 grade. And with that kind of production, I feel like we could get someone who is more defensively minded, a solid penalty killer probably. But the only problem is there's no one on the trade block who I'm really interested in. And the draft this year is actually not very good at all, <laughs> as we see right here. I mean, this uh, there's no five-star players. There's no even four-star players. There's, there's one four-and-a-half-star goaltender. That's it. So... I'm not honestly sure what to do with him. Okay, so here's what I'll do about Cyrnik. I think I might trade him for a draft pick for next year's draft. Just hoping that next year's draft is better than this year's draft. Because this year's draft really, as we saw, does not look great. Yep, sorry Cyrnik. I just don't see a spot for you, buddy. So we're going to be sending him to the Detroit Red Wings who will accept a first round pick for him. So we are definitely going to be making this trade. Finalized deal. Now with that being done, let us simulate through the rest of the season and see where we end up. So the season has come to an end and we finished 47, 27, and 8 with 102 points. I believe that is our first 100 point season. Yes, indeed it is. As last season, we only had 91. And of course, that was the first year that we made the playoffs. So uh, this year, things are looking up, it looks like. And let's see the numbers to finish off the season. So in goal... You have a 9-11 save percentage for Odinger in 53 games and a 9-20 for Lindbergh in 32. Good goaltending tandem of those two. On defense, Brandstrom with 61 points, 60 for Luke Hughes, so two very potent offensive defensemen on the back end. Good to have. And you have Nemich with 31, 28 for Kirsanov, 24 Pelik, 13 for Bowie, and 7 for Mirages. And at forward, you have 82 points for Adam Fantilli. Way to go, buddy. And Rodion Amirov with 71. I believe that is his best season yet, as we take a look at his history. Uh, yeah, that is his best season to date. Brendan Dubé with 65 points, so he certainly stepped it up. The first overall pick from a few years ago, I believe. Nick Suzuki with 44 points, 44 Van Sickle. 36 for Austin Matthews in 32 games, so certainly pulled his weight. Wright with 35 and 82. Uh, kind of underwhelming. Considering he had 30 points in 59 games last year, this is definitely his weakest year yet, I would say. Or, or at least his weakest year since his rookie season, for sure. Mark Sarvidsson with 34 points in 76 games, 29 for Kempe. It looks like he was scratched for a little bit. I don't believe he ever got injured. Toppy Ronnie with 28 points, 16 for Nurmi, 11 for Onishko, and 13 games played for Hollander. How did you do defensively? Let's see the grades for everybody. So Hollander, he had a 53 defensive grade. That's unfortunate. Probably not coming back next year, but it was a good experiment nonetheless. I mean, it, it was better than having the offensively minded Yamamoto who wasn't getting any offense done. So I figured, you know, may as well have a defensive minded player in there. But unfortunately, it just didn't work out. Grade wise, goalie's looking good. Defensively, you have 76 for Hughes, a 75 for Brandstrom, a 73 for Pellick. 59 for Bowie, so he was almost at 60. And forward-wise, you have Matthews, Fantilli, Suzuki, Amirov, Dubé, all with above a 60 grade. Van Sickle and Kempe have 60 exactly. So overall, we're looking good. I mean, once again, that was our best finish in franchise history. And we finished first in the Pacific Division. Not much to complain about. Brain Dubé actually finished fifth in goals in the league. So, I mean, we didn't have any 40 goal scorers, but... We did have a top five goal scorer in the league. And with that, I believe that is the end of our season. So let's see who we have in the playoffs. And we have the LA Kings, who are 41, 32, and 9. As we take a look at their roster, 
Got some four-star players in there, three-and-a-half-star players, three-star players. They look very deep. Pareko, Byfield, Dylan Duke, Arthur Kaliev, Jaden Schwartz, Cole Eiserman. I remember that guy. He was in the draft a couple of years ago. How's he doing so far? Looks like this was his rookie year, 28 points in 59 games. So it looks like we're in for quite a battle here in the first round against LA. And with that, I'll leave it off here. Remember to hit like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys in the next one when we go through the year six playoffs. See you guys then.